We're here at D&D Experience 2008, and talking with me now is Mike Merles, lead developer on Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition. Welcome Hello, to the show, Mike. Thank you. Well, welcome back. Yeah. You've been on the show before. So, um, real quickly, what are your, your experiences here at D&D Experience so far? Yeah, it's been very positive so far. I kind of keep waiting for people to realize that they hate the game, but that still hasn't happened yet. They seem to keep liking it. So that feels really good. I've just sort of like being locked away at like WotC for months and years working on this game, finally having it in the public, and people playing it and enjoying it. Yeah, it feels really good to walk into the sort of the hall here and see tables full of people laughing and playing the game and enjoying it. So that feels very gratifying. So, so what's, the, what's kind of the most frequent questions you've heard from people? A lot of really technical stuff. Just, you know, how does this ability work? How do these two abilities interact? Part of it is that these aren't the final, final rules. They're still, these are about like rules from about a month ago. And it's kind of telling like the base of the final phase of the rules development is essentially clearing up all the little contradictions, lack of clarity here and there, making sure things are clear for the final product. So we're really generally getting questions like, this says this, and does that mean X, you know, like yes or no? Or, and almost all the questions have been, we've already answered that, I already know the right. answer right off the bat. Right, so, okay, that's good. The biggest thing has been uh, the sort of the paladin has this ability to challenge a monster to make you either fight the paladin or take some damage. And paladins have figured out right now what they can do is they can challenge them and say, hey, you have to fight me, and then they run away. And That's so the monster's chasing very, around taking damage. Very yeah. Paladin like. Yeah, exactly. So and we fixed that. That's something okay. we figured out like a month oh, ago. Right. But okay. so it's sort of funny to see that problem come back <laughs> at me. Like, no, no, we got that covered. Don't worry about it. That's cool. So uh, one of the things that people have been asking for is like a little bit like design philosophy on certain things and, and some information in crunch on stuff. So what I want to talk to you about is the monster manual. Yep. So tell me everything you know about everything it. Everything you need to know about the monster manual. And we manual. won't let you go until you're done. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like five hundred monsters total, which I think makes it the biggest monster manual we've ever done. Uh, I hope I'm getting the number right. It's something like 500, I think. Well, whatever. It's a lot. The um, the most important thing with the Monster Manual is sort of getting back this element of surprising players. That when people are playing the adventures here, there's an adventure where they're fighting kobolds. And the kobolds aren't just, there are some kobolds, are just little chumps that you can just hack through. But there's like a kobold slinger who, you know, kind of has this bag of ammo, his little bag of tricks, and he's firing slime at you and balls of this weird glue stuff. And, you know, there was one instance in this adventure where there's this boulder rolling around that the kobolds have unleashed, and there's these kobold slingers firing gobs of glue at people, sticking them in place, and the boulder comes by and crushes them. That's awesome. You know, and that's exactly the kind of stuff we're doing with all the monsters, trying to make them much more unique, have these little surprise effects they can pop on PCs, where fighting a monster now, a big part of it is, if you've been playing D&D a lot, when you get to 4th edition, relearning how to fight some monsters, and then kind of building up that experience of going, hey, we're, okay, this is orcs, we know how to fight orcs. This right. is how orcs fight. This is how we're going to change our tactics. To really make every encounter feel different. That, and even within, like, say, the orc tribe, like the kobold tribe, as an example, there's different types of kobolds you can fight. They're, they're priest, and they're wizard, and they're, they're slinger, and the archer have different little abilities. They're themed together so they feel like kobolds, but every guy has like this little trick he can pull. Right. You know, there's one adventure where there's uh, the, the other sort of preview adventure, Escape from Sembia, where there's this nasty skeletal guy and one of his arms is a place with a sword. And when you beat him up enough, when you kill him, he explodes. You know, and people just that hasn't you know people don't know that yet. They haven't. Yeah. It's their first time playing for edition. So they have to learn that the hard way exactly. the first time. Yeah, and it's fun to see people le like relearning the game. You know, everything old is new again, and it's it's good to see that resonating with people. People really feel like even those jaded gamers are seeing cool new stuff that's coming up and feeling challenged again by the game. Right. So and that's a big thrust of the monster manual to to make monsters sort of mysterious and, and kind of scary again. So when online, I know you follow all the online forums pretty well and you're, you're blogging a lot. What do you think is the biggest question? If you could answer one question about the Monster Manual for people that comes up the most, what would that be? The biggest issue that people ask about is monsters are still very customizable. I get a lot of questions about can I add character class levels to them? Are there templates? Can I change a monster's level? And we still support all of that. Uh, in some of the published adventures we, I've worked on, like uh, the H series that's coming out, there is a, there's a Null Warlock. There's an NPC human wizard you fight at the end. Um, you can still add classes. You can still tinker with monsters. We've tried to make the system transparent enough and include guidelines for DMs that if, if you even say have like an, uh, a 10th level troll, you think it's a cool monster, but your party's 15th level, it's not much work to make him 15th level. You know, and whether you're doing that just by adding levels to him, if you want to add a template to him, there's a lot of tools still in the game. You have just as much customization options in fourth edition as you've had in, in third edition. And hopefully, and actually one of the things you've done, like learning from third edition, building on that, making even more focused tools, 
that are easier and faster to apply. So it's not as daunting now. You can have a lot more flexibility to sort of the way DMs, you know, they don't need all this rigorous math and stuff. They just need more guidelines and a focus on saying, this is what your end result wants to be, but how you get there, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Right. That's awesome. All right, Mike Morales, lead developer, Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition, Wizards of the Coast. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me.